Have you ever wanted to have your students annotate a video? Um, well, if you like me and do, then I would suggest that you look at VideoAnt, which is an excellent site free from the University of Minnesota. And basically only the teacher needs to create an account. And after that, you can have your students sign in either with their own email or with even with a fake email address or you can also create a class on there. But I'm just going to show you the basics of how to use Video Ant, and then later in another video I might show you a few more extra little tips and tricks. So start off by going to ant.umn.edu and that will take you to this web page and after that you'll need to create your account. Now to create an account um, obviously if you have a University of Minnesota account you can use that but otherwise you're going to use Google or Facebook. Um, once you create your account by connecting through either Google or Facebook, you will be logged in and you will have a blank page here. I've got a lot of videos here, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to be integrating a YouTube video into this. So I'm going to go to YouTube and shamelessly use one of my videos and I'm going to copy the web address for that. I'm going to come back to Video Ant. I'm going to click on New Ant and then I'm going to paste in the URL and hit Load and should just take a few seconds and it will pop up with the video and you'll notice that there is nothing over here at this point here other than saying that there's no annotations. Um, so how does this work? Well, I've set up things for myself where um, I've posted questions at various points along the video and then the students when they get to that point they can then um, stop the video and they can actually add their comments below the original question. But I've also flipped it around and I give my students a chance to be able to annotate it themselves. So for example, I'll post them a video and what I'll do is I'll have them listen for certain phrases or certain things that they need to um, mark in the video. So I might give them questions either on a piece of paper or in our, on our website. Um, and then what they'll do is they will then watch the video and they will annotate in the video where they hear those things. So for example, maybe I have uh, a set of questions about certain things uh, about the video and those set of questions uh, might have uh, particular points like what did the person say after this and then they stop the video and they'll actually type in what they heard. Um, the reason why I like that is it helps me to see what they're hearing, if they want to put it in that way. Um, and it's very easy to do. So how does that work? Well, basically, just start the video. And when you start the video, um, you'll notice you get the time frame down here. You also have this little button here, and that's where you can add annotation. So I'm just going to get to a point here, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to click the button. And when I do that, um, nice point here. Um, then I can type in my subject and content. I don't have to put content if I don't want, but I can just type in some sort of subject like uh, what did he just say? Okay. And I can put down here type in a direct quotation. So then that way I can um, get maybe some listening for for listening for detail type of thing. Um, and then I just hit save. And as soon as I hit save, it continues the video where it's going. And then I can again stop at any point, click add annotation, and it does it again. So one of the interesting things that it will do as well, I'm just going to cancel this and pause the video, is that when you click on the little time marker, it's like a little button, it'll actually take you to that part of the video. So I'm going to actually take the video back to near the beginning. I'm going to press play, but I'm actually going to click the button here and it will skip to that part of the video. So you can almost use this like a bookmarking tool as well. So if you have a video and you want to bookmark certain sections, you can do that because as soon as you click, it'll take you to that section of the video. And if it's playing, it will continue playing. But you can also, if it stops, you can just press play and it will continue to start playing from that point on. You'll notice also that there is an edit little pencil and I can go in and edit if I've made a typo or if I want to change what I said but also there's a response button. Now, the response button is for when somebody else comes in. So let's just take a look at how I would share this with students at this point. So now what I want to do is I want to share this video. So I'm going to click on the little gear part here under the video. I'm going to click on share and I want to put public annotate. If I wanted just students just to view it, 
That'd be one thing where it has the questions, but I want them to be able to add things to it. So I'm going to leave this to annotate. Otherwise, I could hit it as view or private. So I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to copy the URL here, close this, and I'm just going to show you what that would look like. So I'm going to open up an incognito window so I'm not logged in anymore. I'm going to go here, and you'll notice it comes here, and it shows it, but it doesn't come up with the annotate button. I can play this. In fact, I can click the button just like I showed you, and it will skip to that section of the video. But if I want to have them annotate something, what I want them to do is I'm going to have them sign in. So they click on the sign in button. Whether they have an account or not at this point here doesn't matter. So I scroll down, and then it says access this ant as a guest. They don't need an account to be able to use it. In fact, you can use any type of thing as long as it looks like an email address. So something at something.com or .ca or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then you hit I accept the video and terms and then sign in as guest. So I'm going to just do that. I'm just going to do a random little fake email. I hit accept and sign in as guest. Now there's one problem with using the fake email address and that is if you don't know who's connected to which um, email address, you won't be able to connect to that student. So if it's important that you know who wrote what, then the other way to do this, like I did before with my class, was I created accounts by giving them a fake email address that I had connected to their names. And then they could use that to sign into video and, and I knew who was connected to what. What was great about that was it didn't um, have to worry about um, identifiable information for privacy rules, as long as I didn't post that list somewhere else for somebody to find. So I just kept it on paper on my desk, and then that way I knew who said what. So now that they're in, remember, this is the fake email address I put in. So this isn't logged in as me. And I now get the annotate button. And so they can actually go in and they can respond to my question or they can create their own annotations as well. OK, so this is a handy little tool. I really like this. Um, there's a lot of um, options here for students to be able to watch things and interact with videos as opposed to just being a passive, um, shall we say, observer in this case. We want them to be a participant. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Um, I've used it for everything from um, kind of bottom-up type listening where students have to listen for specific details and pull out those details to more top-down. After you listen to something, what was your opinion? What were your thoughts about this? What did they generally say about this? So again, more um, bottom or top-down type listening type of questions. I've also used it for, like I said, bookmarking as well. So they can bookmark certain sections of the video of where they need to skip to, or even if I'm presenting in class, I want to show a video, this is a great way of doing it because I can skip to certain sections and then I don't have to um, worry about that. Or I share it with them so that they can click to the certain sections. I'll say click to section one, I label it as subject section one, section two, section three, and then they can listen to certain sections of a longer video. I just want them to watch certain sections. Great little tool, handy little tool. I'll take you through some more details about it another time, but hopefully that gives you some ideas.